Um, hey, quit. Seriously? Jax, let me see. What's in your mouth? Good boy. What a good boy. I'm so proud of you, Jax. Don't play with it. Kill it, Jax. Jax, man. <laughs> here, let's take it outside, okay? Here. No, put him out here. Drop it. Jax, drop the mouse. Drop it. Well, good morning. I think that lake wants to be fished in one more time. It's a beautiful morning out here at Lake St. Clair. I do have my Washington State fishing license, which I have not used much this summer. So before I leave the state, uh, see if I can reel a couple in. Well, I'm sure the lawnmower over there isn't helping me catch fish. <laughs> all right, I'll put all the fishing gear away and uh, pack it on up. And uh, Jax and I will head south. That's right, we're going south before I go east. Gonna explore, see brand new stuff. That's what it's all about. What, what are you... <laughs> you cleaning yourself? All right, we'll go ahead and take a break. You go ahead and finish cleaning yourself. Well, I gotta pack a few more things up anyway. I'm not, I'm not really ready to go yet. You're about ready to go though, huh? Come here, hop up. Hop all the way up. You about ready to go? Go places, go south, okay? Okay. Sounds good, man. Anything else? What do you mean? What? Okay, show me. Okay, now we're ready to go. Are you going to be a dash cat to start the day? You usually don't like the vibrations, but you, you, you can start up here sometimes. If you don't like it, you can go to your seat, okay? Is that okay? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to hop on the highway here, guys. Not for very long. There, um, there was something cool here in Centralia, but it's it's closed. It's actually only open a couple hours one day a week. But you know what? It is so cool that once we get parked tonight, I'm gonna ride the motorcycle back tomorrow morning and check it out. How's that sound? That's what we're gonna do. And we're not gonna be on I-5 very long today. Uh, I'm gonna take you guys along with me. Oh, that's cool. I got a motorcycle on the back of that Volkswagen. Westphalia. I'm gonna take you on an adventure way out of the way, like an hour's drive off of I-5 to see something really cool. Now we're gonna be heading east on 505 towards Toledo. Now understand also, I'm not always gonna be doing these 120 mile detours off of my route. And when I say route, I know people would say, Eric, you can go wherever you want, you're a nomad, but let's, if I say I'm starting at point A and I'm trying to get to point B for some reason, if I go 120 miles the opposite out of the way direction just to come back, then it's gotta be something I really wanna see, right? And this is, this is worth the drive. Uh, I could take the motorcycle, it's just, uh, it's a little chilly this morning and it did rain last night a little bit, so the roads are so a little moist. So. We'll uh, head on east. stop here in Toledo, Washington. Neat little mural, motorcycle. And uh, May 18th, 1980, Washington State was rocked by the eruption of Mount St. Helens.
as you can see here, Toledo is the gateway to Mount St. Helens, starring Mother Nature and Father Time. It all happened a year before I was even born. I have never visited this area of the state, and there is a national park about 60, 55 miles east of here. So we're going to go check it out. Bigfoot country. Yes. I don't know what the buried A-frame necessarily means, but obviously I'm going to find out for you. Oh my gosh. I love Bigfoot stuff, guys. This is the biggest one ever. This is a 16-foot Sam Squanch. Bigfoot. 16-footer there. And he does look pretty happy. He's smiling, kind of waving to people with his walking stick, I think. Yeah. This has actually been rebuilt, though. There's some information over here that says that the original Sasquatch was built out of wire and fiberglass with carpet material. I guess over time they realized that it uh, wasn't going to stand up too well outdoors. Look at those fingernails. <laughs> That's cool. Again, here's a picture before the volcano, and here is where we're standing after the volcano. All this lava rock everywhere. It changed the whole landscape. Volcano Country Mount St. Helens T-shirt and Souvenir Center. We will visit that on the way out, for sure. Just reading up on some sun-faded text here about the A-frame that was talked about, which we can look at right here. Uh, construction began in this building in 1978. Three days before its completion, apparently all they had to do was put the chimney on, but three days before that, Mount St. Helens erupted and buried this house in a mound of mud and lava. As you can see, as we stand back, the ground level is now higher right here. And the whole stru structure looks to be sunk into the ground. You, uh, tours, you could go in there, but it's probably not very stable and safe anymore. Look at all the moss on the roof. Here was one of the windows. Oh my gosh. So gives you an idea for how the entire landscape anywhere near Mount St. Helens completely changed. Because I could walk through this area not knowing and just think that where I'm standing right now, it has been ground level since the beginning of time. And it's not the case. They also do some helicopter tours over there. Can't fly a, a drone up in the national park, so I won't be able to get you any over over aerial shots, but I do want to go up to the visitor center and see what we can do. If I need to take the bike up through the park, we shall see. Let me go inside the gift store here and see if there's anything I gotta have. And of course, Bigfoot lives, unless he didn't survive the volcano. <laughs> so the shop up here, the gift shop, does have some magnets in here. We're gonna be able to find one for sure. And they opened this uh, in the 80s after the eruption and they have some, some artifacts as well. I'll show you which uh, magnet I pick out later, but let's go look at this. They've got some relics in here. Of course, the famous Sasquatch right there. Here's a couple of the castings. October 20th, 1967 by Bob Gimlin there. They get the right and the left foot here. There's even a, a Bigfoot hair sample there that came back in, inconclusive from testing. And look at all these castings. 1982, Grays Harbor. So there's a lot to see in here. Holy cow, they are super helpful. You're not gonna believe this. Well, first of all, um, they're still remodeling stuff and Mr. Bigfoot here is gonna be remodeled as well. That's in the works for a third time. Hopefully he'll stick around. Hopefully they won't tear it down and then rebuild. Now, I was talking with the nice lady in the gift shop here and she said, you know, if you want, you can just leave your RV parked right here and take the bike up. It's gonna be a lot e more easier. We're still 35 miles away from the park entrance. I'm gonna take old Roxanne uh, up the mountain and into the park. So I'll grab my America the Beautiful pass, make sure Jax is all good, lock everything up, bring some extra batteries for the camera and we'll go check out Mount St. Helens. Oh, but first we need to add the new magnet. I got an acrylic, Let's see if you can see it. It says Bigfoot Country on it. Again, another smaller magnet to not take up a whole bunch of space back here. Oh, I'd say we still got a few more years of magnets to collect. It's 75 degrees and actually quite warm, even though it's muggy looking. And I killed it. She's cold-blooded. 
let her warm up for a little bit. But no, it's it's warm enough, and we're gonna be going 50 miles an hour up through here, so I'm I'm not gonna wear it wear a jacket, my helmet and a t-shirt, I guess. Yeah. We're only halfway done. I got up here 15 miles, I'm not even kidding you. I made a mistake, I was freezing on the bike. So I got a hoodie that says Mount St. Helens. <laughs> I got so cold. <laughs> and they have a little free museum in here, so we'll check this out before we head back up the mountain. So return of the forests, effect 234 square miles devastated. But apparently it comes back. See a little chipmunk there bouncing around. <laughs> so there's a theater to go to. Oh, look at the woodpecker up there in the tree. <laughs> I mean, you know how I feel about museums. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time in there, and it's a it's a warehouser specific museum. But let's put my sweater on and uh, get up and finish this trip up to the uh, observation area. Can you see the snow-capped mountains off in the distance? Yeah. I think we still got about 12 miles officially to the observatory, but... I mean, here we are at the start of the Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument. It's not a national park, but it is run by the Nash... the BLM. All that stuff, yeah. I know I look ridiculous in this big mushroom helmet, but... definitely easier managing any kind of a nat national area with a motorcycle and it is an RV. Eh, there's limitations, you know, the e-bike, well the e-bike's not gonna go 75 miles. <laughs> At least I'm not gonna ride it 75 miles. But the motorcycle is pretty cool. Wow, so this is Coldwater Lake. Look at this view. It's incredible. You know, I talked about some of the things I didn't like about, say, uh, Mount Rainier National Park or Glacier National Park. You know, just too many people, too busy, too much construction, too too much traffic and stuff. Uh, out here, you kind of just have everything to yourself at Mount St. Helens. I mean, this little area does have signs up there that say no, no camping. But still, you know, really pretty area. Well, let me get back on the bike and we'll finish the last nine miles to the, the, the Ridge Observatory. All right, well, we're up here at the very top, and I guess not, not too many people actually make it all the way to the top for whatever reason. They just settle for whatever's below, but we're at the end of the road up here at 4,600 feet. We started at 1,200 feet elevation, now we're at 4,600 feet. Like I said, the only thing I regret is not wearing long pants and bringing my jacket along, but let's go check out the views up here at the front. These guys are pretty friendly, aren't they? They'll just come right up to me. Wow. That's probably the closest a chipmunk squirrel's ever gotten to me. Hmm. Cool. Can I, can I pet you? No, I can't pet you. Okay. Have a good day, buddy. I should have called it a beaver, then I could have got 200 people correcting me in the comments. Oh, leave me alone. <laughs> oh, and can I say one more motorcycle thing? Because I've owned quite a few motorcycles and scooters. That was 36 miles. By the end of this, I'll have over 70,000 miles for the day. That is the most comfortable ride seat on any motorcycle I've ever ridden on. It's so comfy. Okay, so here we are up at the top. I'm a little out of breath. The Mount St. Helens National Observatory. They're doing a little demonstration over there for people that paid for something. But as we turn around, there's Mount St. Helens right there, guys. And you can kind of see some of the destruction nearby. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty crazy. So Mount St. Helens here and Mount Adams right over there where the snow cap is. I'll take some pictures and post on Instagram. Also, I want to go in here to the uh, gift store, see if we can find a national park uh, magnet of sorts. 
So magnets, they got these crummy ones that I don't like, the generic big ones that are just really plain and ordinary. They do have this one, which is like a, a sign, and they have pictures of Mount St. Helens. But again, I'm not too impressed, and I don't think I'm actually going to get a magnet. <laughs> just one random metal magnet right there. Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument. I think I'll take the one of a kind instead. <laughs> so, Mount St. Helens, I finally made it. I took you guys along as well. In case you've never seen Mount St. Helens, I'm sure you've heard of it. It's kind of a famous volcano, you know. But I got a long, long trek, 36 miles back to the RV in Jack's. And uh, I'll make a sandwich when I get back. But let me get this ride on and I'll get back to you when I get back to the RV. Made it back safely. Nice and sunny and warm now. So I'll load the bike back up. And uh, we gotta find some, some camping, but don't leave yet because remember, I'm still gonna get on the bike tomorrow morning and include part of that other thing in, in Centralia. So um, yeah, let's get, let's get parked for the day at least. Did you have a pretty good cat day then? Y you did? I think we're done driving, okay? Yeah, I took the motorcycle for most of it so you didn't have to deal with all that. You could just sleep. Aren't I a good guy? You need a good boy, yeah. All right, man. All right, so I'm gonna do some rest area camping. Some rest area camping. I think it'll be okay because we're in a designated RV area. RV parking. Which in my mind means that a semi truck should not be parking here and running a reefer or a generator or anything crazy like that tonight. I think it'll be nice. Do you think? Possibly? Yeah, we'll see. No, semi trucks won't fit in these RV parking only slots, so definitely safe. I feel like it's, uh, we're finally there, guys, making some big changes here at the end of the summer, getting out of here. Washington State has been awesome. I'm going to say stay tuned because I'm going to take the bike off tomorrow morning, go back to Centralia to film when that thing is open. And, uh, okay, it's a bordello museum, a working bordello museum upstairs of an old antique store. Uh, preserved, re re I guess you'd call it restored, or something like that. So, yeah, I'll cut back in tomorrow morning. Pretty easy to park that motorcycle, guys. <laughs> Pretty easy, and they do have free parking here, so it's not too bad. Let's go see, let's go check out this museum. It is a neat little town down here. Wow, wow. okay, there it is, just right in front of us, the Shady Lady. Not actually sure if I can film in there just yet, but up until the mid-1960s, that was a working bordello. So that was in this century, at least. Kind of cool. Let's go in there and see if I can share anything with you. I got the okay to share a little bit with you. So they have the antique store downstairs and upstairs as a museum. I'm only going to show you a little bit of this and we're going upstairs. Here we are upstairs in the Shady Lady Bordello Museum. And they have a guest book here to sign. I'm going to have to do that. It just feels so old up here. Or any of my viewers, ladies of the night in a previous life? <laughs> Probably not. The sign here says, Ladies traveled from building to building using secret staircases and doorways throughout historic downtown Centralia. A little peek into this lady's room here with a view of downtown Centralia out the window. Um, discretion, please. Nobody needs to see that on YouTube. Wow, it feels like the old west in this room. Look at that checkers board. Wow. An old Victrola here. Can you imagine a working bordello just in 1965 right here in Centralia? It just seems like it was not that long ago, right? What did they do for birth control? They took tansy tea and penny royal herbs. Okay, good luck with that. And a couple other names for the ladies. Soiled doves or ladies of the rails. And I really like how they left the open frame on top here where you can see the brick through it throughout all these rooms. No ceiling. And always remember to remove your spurs before going to bed. <laughs> All right, guys, from Jackson and I, we shall see you very soon here on the road as we continue to go south. You guys have a good day, morning, night, I guess. Quit trying to play with it. It's still alive. You proud of yourself? <laughs>